Ah, I've owned one of these water heaters for um, about four and a half years and had various problems with the immersion heater element being very unreliable. There's three people living in the property and the eco part which takes the warmth from the apartment air and then removes the heat from the air using a refrigeration unit and then um, heats the water with the heat that's created. Um, you can get an advantage of maybe twice the electricity you put in, perhaps more. Um, so two kilowatt hours in, and you might get up to three or four kilowatts hours of heating into the water. So the backup situation is that, um, or the primary source of heat, I guess, in good weather, is going to be the eco section, which is the compressor and the heat exchanger, recovering heat from the apartment air. And then as the winter draws in and the temperatures drop, the primary source of heat is going to be the immersion heater in the bottom of the tank. It's just basically a standard electric resistor element immersion heater. Um, and the top half, the refrigeration and the eco part, has been pretty good. Um, and the quality of the tank's not bad either, but this water heater element down here, I'm doing this short video, has been very problematic and the elements blow up very frequently, go short to ground and trip the whole flat out and the lights go out and it's leaking to ground. And the fitting of that that um, element is not standard UK fitting, it's a particularly Chinese or continental fitting. The elements aren't very easily available and the elements don't last very long. So if this had a UK fitting that I could fit a proper stainless steel UK heating element um, designed for 240 volts instead of 220, it would be a much better product. So it has been a real pain. So I'm just going to show you a quick video on what's been going on with that. Servicing this water heater, this is one of those eco water heaters that <coughs> recovers air from the atmosphere, heat from the atmosphere, should I say, and then puts it into the water. It's supposed to give you like three to four to one uh, improvement in efficiency over a direct, you know, resistive heating element. So what it does is it sucks, this is the top of the landing, it sucks the air into that duct there, draws it down into this heat exchanger compressor, there's a compressor in the top part of the tank, and then exhausts the cold air outside. So the idea is it recovers heat from the living area. Um, the compressor part seems to work pretty well, but what is particularly awful, this is a Chinese pro product, and you can see it's... Um, if you look around here you can see that it's been MCS approved which is the official approval body for this type of product so you need that to get any um, if you on a, um, a an arrangement where you get some sort of um, benefits or government subsidies from some kind of eco system for example um, solar panels and your input tariff then you, the MCS have to approve it and they've approved this thing but it's been here four years and it's been nothing but trouble and the trouble is it's a Chinese hot water tank and every year usually every year um, or six months the um, auxiliary immersion heater in here leaks to ground now uh, the standard English size doesn't fit <coughs> and the standard um, and they are quite expensive these heating elements and clearly they are not suited the sacrificial magnesium anode is here look and it's still intact and that's been changed every year also to protect the stainless steel tank you need one of these to stop the galvanic act action attacking the stainless steel whoever installed this um, shouldn't really have used any copper pipes or fittings as well close to the tank i think if you read some what some of the pundits say and i'm not saying this is true but this is what they say is that you're supposed to have um, stainless steel fittings um, right up until the tank otherwise you'll get some corrosion of the tank so to cut long story short see it's this kind of fitting there's a steel ring on the outside with these nuts on I've taken some off already you remove those and inside there is, an, is a heating element I've tried several different types from China but for some reason the stainless goes porous they're 220 volts the voltage here is 240 volts they're one and a half kilowatts but they don't last very long at all there's um, three people living, three adults living in this flat and uh, you can draw your own conclusions really about the reliability of the things but they, to, so far it's been an absolute terrible waste of time so I carry several of these, I've imported these in because they were like 45 quid from the supplier that supplied this um, and they're about six dollars in China and they're identical so I've, I've just imported a whole raft of these things, heating elements for six dollars from China 
So if anybody wants one, let me know. But yeah, generally, a, you know, it's quite economical to run, but it's bloody unreliable. So anything you likely save in power, if you can't service it yourself, you're going to blow all your money on uh, servicing it for an engineer to come, drain down the tank, remove the heating element, put a new heating element on, and fire it back up again, and then come back six months to a year later and do the thing all over again. I mean, I'm an engineer, I believe in preventative maintenance passionately, but this thing, Jesus, I mean, I'm almost tempted just to rip it out, throw it away, and put a standard lead heel stainless steel tank in where the elements last five, six, seven years without any trouble at all. So hopefully it won't spring a leak, but you never know. It's been a complete bloody nightmare and um, not good. <clears throat> um, it does, if you get this, <coughs> if you get the problem and you get this um, tripping out your RCD and your box, because it's leaking to ground, it will throw out the breaker in your box. Most mud modern houses are fitted with a residual current breaker, so you can, what you can do is to uh, just, what I did here to keep the tenants happy was to disconnect the power lines to this and then put some good bit of tape around them and then you can switch it back on and run on eco mode and in the warm weather, uh, it's June at the moment, June 18, it'll um, produce plenty of water um, for a couple of people without the actual auxiliary heater. This is really here for the winter and also during times of high water demand where the eco side of it, the heat recovery from the air, which is pumped into the water by the refrigeration uh, heat exchanger pump, can't keep up. This is the backup heater, and it's all controlled by the electronic timer up in that piece there. So it will run without that quite happily if you want it to, um, and it's a good backup. You know, nip in, disconnect the wires, and it gives you a few days breathing space while you get the heater and it gets some time and space to actually drain the thing down and to replace the heating element. But these are complete rubbish, totally unsuited. It's the stainless part of the stainless element goes porous. And I think there's lots of inclusion in the stainless when it's extruded. And if you, I've looked at it under a microscope, you can see the surface is kind of porous. And they just break down and start this wire starts leaking to the earth connection or the outer case of the heater within six months to a year. And then it won't run. So there you are. So... Um, I'll take it out and show it to you in a minute, but I just thought you might be interested. So it's the ESP Eco Connect heat recovery hot water tank. Good in principle. Refrigeration engineering seems to be reliable. That's five years old without any trouble at all, apart from taking this top cover off and blowing all the dust and the stuff out because there's no filters on the input. But the uh, immersion heater is a complete pain. Uh, I'll show you in a minute. Yeah, so one thing worthy of note is this um, ceiling ring, uh, the ceiling arrangement. This is the old element, by the way. I mean, that's uh, five months of use. Look at the rust in there. That's rust. So the stainless steel is not very stainless. It's also got a clump of uh, ferrous something or other. That's just plain old rust, that is. It's just complete rubbish. So another triumph by Chinese manufacturing a stainless steel water heater. But it seals on this, oh, this ceiling ring here. There's a ring in the front. See that ceiling ring there? And the ring seals onto this seat. But the when I got this seat, when I first um, changed the first one, this seat, where they've tacked this seat in by, they weld tacked this seat into the base of the tank, into the aperture of the tank. These welds were well proud. Great big welds on these point, this point here and here. And it was biting right into the seal. And it was virtually impossible to get a good seal. It was weeping, and it was weeping because of these blobs of weld so I had to take a Dremel to it and grind those off so that this seat is smooth and after that it's so much easier to seal so if you do take one of these apart have a look in there to make sure that these these blobs of weld that hold the, the seat in are actually not sticking onto the actual mating surface of the o-ring because you can press as far as you can down on the o-ring and the actual element is sitting down pinching down and sitting on these bumps and so the o-ring isn't actually doing its job and it's a nightmare to actually seal until you take those off once you take those off it's much easier but yeah um that was changed before the tenants moved in about four months ago now look at it now it's a disaster uh, terrible terrible design so anybody got any ideas about how to improve this um i read about galvanic isolation and um sacrificial anodes and fittings but clearly something's clearly wrong and i think it's just the heating elements because 
one type lasts about a year and the other type lasts about six months. And the previous type to this type, which they supplied, didn't have this rust. This is basically iron oxide, iron 2 oxide. So yeah, it's got some iron in the, uh, in the stainless, which is too much. If there's not enough chrome in the stainless, um, there's not enough chrome in the stainless, um, then there's enough room for the oxidization progress to get in between the lattice of the crystals. So, um, you know, if you don't put enough chrome in, the chrome blocks the action by an inactive oxide in the stainless. So the chrome component of the stainless covers the surface and the oxygen can't physically get in. But if the chrome level's too low, the oxygen still get into the and basically erode the metal and corrodes lead oxide. So I'm guessing the stainless has just got not got enough chromium in it to make it stainless, proper stainless. So there you are, yeah, beware. Buy an English water heater, don't buy a Chinese one. I'll put it back together, and uh, there's not much else to be said about it really, um, but just thought I'd let you know, I guess you have got the same problem. Magic Smoke Channel signing off. Yeah, it's all done and dusted now, and if you, uh, if you are gonna get one of these things, or you have one of these things, you maintain it. There's this pressure relief valve. It's normally got a little red cap on the on the on the outside. Uh, it's gone. It snapped off. But I'm just putting a new one. I just ordered a new one. But get one of those because they weep. Also, buy yourself a cheap pressure gauge, about 14 pounds, and you can connect it to the drain cock. I, I've taken away the standard drain cock, which is a real pain. One of those ones with a screw and the slug comes out. And I've put a standard washing machine tap down there and this cap off here so that you can just connect a hose pipe straight on there and if you leave the mains pressure switched on you'll have three bar in the tank 45 psi and just turn that on first to prime the hose pipe and also to blitz any crap out of the, um, the inlet down there down the pipe so otherwise it might get blocked and fouled and the other thing is this I learned something today about this if you if that pressure release valve is weeping you've got to either be this thing over pressurizing that's a three-way control valve for three bar 45 psi water pressure it controls the water pressure into the tank from the mains obviously clearly mains tank pressure would be too much for the tank probably certainly over seven bar so um, yeah they're 35 quid from screw fix and these are 20 quid from screw fix don't forget there's a red cap on the end and I just went to Graham's Builders Merchants and they tried to charge me 60 quid and that was trade. 60 quid, 80 odd pounds they were trying to trade me, 60 pounds for cash trade, 20 quid from screw fix, identical part, identical manufacturer. So I advise you to have one of those in stock if you've got one of these tanks. But that's about it. That's it for another six months or a year until the, uh, until the seal, until the element goes.